。OK。配信がスタートしました。皆さん、こんばんは。見えてますか音も大丈夫でしょうかぜひチャットで教えてください。Uh, thank you for joining us tonight.、Uh, can you see us and hear us well? Uh, please let us know in the chat. Uh, それでは第36回カフェトーク英語シンポジウムアメリカ合食国、えー、構成する週を開始したいと思います、えー、本日司会を担当します、えー、カフェトークスタッフのアイファと申します、えー、本日参加する2人の講師はサンシャイン先生とシジリー先生です。最初はサンシャイン先生はニュージャージー州を紹介して、その後はシジリー先生がケンタッキーを、えーえー、紹介したいと思います、えー。皆様ご質問やコメントがあれば、ぜひチャットボックスでお送りください。Uh, welcome to the 36th Symposium in English. Today's theme is、uh, states that make up the USA.、Uh, I'm today's host,、uh, Cafe Talk Tutor Support Haifa.、Uh, and today I'm joined with two tutors, Sunshine, who will first introduce the state of New Jersey, and then CG Lee will tell us about Kentucky. So,、uh, Sunshine, I'll let you go on first. Thank、um, you. Hello, everyone.、Um, my name is Sunshine, and today I'm going to take you on a short journey through my home state of New Jersey. New Jersey has a rich history, beautiful nature, and some unique places that I want to share with you. I'll also want to talk about my hometown, Haddonfield, where something very special was discovered. So let's get started. Here are some quick facts about New Jersey. It was founded on December 18th, 1787. It's the third smallest state in the US with a population around 9.3 million, and it's located between New York and Pennsylvania. New Jersey. Played a big role in American history. In 1787, William Patterson from New Jersey, pictured here, introduced the New Jersey Plan, which helped shape the government of the United States. Then, in 1789, New Jersey became the first state to agree to the Bill of Rights, which gave us important rights and freedom. New Jersey has a strong history of being part of the USA. History. Now we have here is the New Jersey State flag. The color that you see is actually based on the uniforms that New Jersey soldiers wore during the Revolutionary War.、Um, the horse symbol you see here represents. Strength, while these women here are a symbol of freedom and abundance. Every element of this flag is just the culture that is New Jersey. Now, let's take a look at the、uh, <clears throat> excuse me, New Jersey capital, which is Trenton. Did you know that Trenton was briefly the capital of the entire United States in 1784? It also played a key role in the Revolutionary War with the famous Battle of Trenton, where George Washington made his daring crossing of the Delaware River. Trenton is one of the oldest capital cities in the U.S. By the 1800s, it became a major industrial hub, especially known for its iron production. In fact, the Trenton Makes Bridge still proudly displays the sign Trenton Makes the World Takes, which shows just how much the city contributed to the industry. Trenton is a small but mighty capital with a lot of history and heart.
Now you will see the New Jersey bird, the goldfinch. Mm, this bird, designated as our state bird in 1935, it's known for its bright yellow color, which of course, um, yellow is similar to the New Jersey state flag. Um, this bird is a symbol of joy in New Jersey because especially in the summertime, you can see this goldfinch from sunflower to sunflower. Um, speaking of sunflower, another inspiration to my nickname, Sunshine. <laughs> Meet Abraham Browning, as you can see in the middle. He's the man who helped New Jersey earn its famous nickname, the Garden State. In 1876, during a big celebration, Browning described New Jersey as a barrel full of fruits and vegetables, helping to popularize the nickname. Originally, there were talks that New Jersey was going to have the state name the Egg State because eggs were often produced in New Jersey. But thanks to Browning, the Garden State name stuck. I think we can all agree, the Garden State sounds a bit better than Egg State. Continuing on to the food and vegetables that is famous in New Jersey is tomatoes. Tomatoes are a huge part of New Jersey uh, culture. In fact, New Jersey tomatoes are grown so great and so fresh that it helped create the famous soup company Campbell's Soup. This company started in Camden, New Jersey, and again, we owe it to the incredible tomatoes. We are also very famous for our blueberries and corn. So again, as you can see, that is why we are the Garden State. Who here loves M&M chocolate? I know I do. Well, did you know that one of the main factories for M&M chocolates is located in Hackettstown, New Jersey? It's a place that holds a lot of sweet memories for me as it's close to my university, Centenary University. Every morning we wake up to the smell of chocolate being melted and transformed into those delicious little M&Ms. It was truly a unique experience to be surrounded by the aroma of chocolate, and Hackettstown has been proudly producing M&Ms since 1958. Now, what goes great with chocolate? Wine. New Jersey may be small, but it's home to some incredible wineries. One that stands out is Valazino Family Winery, located in Samsung, right in the heart of Pine Barrens. It's known for its unique wines and welcoming atmosphere, offering something for everyone. You also have Cape May Winery, located by the coast, and Tomasello Winery, which is actually one of the oldest in New Jersey. For those who enjoy wines, I highly recommend Valenzino's Family Winery. It is such a great way to enjoy the beauty that is New Jersey. Now, a scary legend in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey is the mystery of the New Jersey Devil. Scotland has the Loch Ness Monster. We have a devil. This monster was born around 1735. Legend has it that on a dark night, Mother Lees was giving birth to her 13th child. So frustrated to have another child, she cried out while giving birth, let the devil take this one. So upon the birth, a monster was born in New Jersey. Legends say this monster still roams the eerie Pine Barrens at night. So 
be careful camping there. <laughs> Now, let's move on to some beach fun. Let's take a trip to New Jersey's most popular summer destination, Atlantic City. It's famous for its exciting casinos, beautiful beaches, and lively boardwalk. Speaking of the boardwalk, Atlantic City is home to the oldest boardwalk in the world, built in 1870, and it holds the title for the longest boardwalk. If you ever want to visit New Jersey in the summer, this is the place you want to be. It has something for everyone. Now, who here loves baseball? I know I do. Did you know that New Jersey is the birthplace of baseball? The first organized baseball game was played in New Jersey between two early teams, the Knickerbockers and the New York Nine. This game may have started small, but it launched baseball into a huge international sport it is today, especially in countries like Japan. It's amazing how such a famous sport all started in, yes, you guessed it, New Jersey. Mm. When people ask me about sports teams in New Jersey, they always ask me, Marissa, what sports teams are popular in New Jersey? Well, it really just depends on where you live. New Jersey, because it's so small, the only sports team we really have left is the New Jersey Devils. So again, depending on where you live, you're likely cheering for teams from either Philadelphia or New York. I was born and raised in South New Jersey, where we root for Philadelphia teams, especially the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, that would be me in green. In fact, my house is just a quick 20 minute drive to Philly to catch a live game. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, the culture is the same, but they cheer for New York teams like Yankees, Mets, football, you have the New York Giants, the Jets. So, New Jersey, we may be united, but in divorce, in, excuse me, but in sports, we are very <laughs> divided. <laughs> and finally, we have my hometown, Haddonfield. Sorry for the title display. Um, so here is some history about my hometown. Its historic town is known for its colonial, uh, excuse me, colonial architect. It's most famous for something a bit more prehistoric, dinosaurs. In 1858, the first nearly complete dinosaur skeleton in North America was discovered right here in Haddonfield. The dinosaur, named Hadrosaurus, is now our state dinosaur, and the site of the discovery is only a 10-minute walk from my house. This, this discovery was a groundbreaking moment for our hometown. So if you love Jurassic Park as much as I love, as much as I do, I really recommend you check out this amazing statue. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through my home state of New Jersey. From our rich history, legendary tales, to our love of sports and dinosaurs, there's so much that makes New Jersey unique. Before I go, I can't forget to mention one of the most iconic landmarks, Lucy the Elephant. Standing proudly by the shore, Lucy has been a symbol of New Jersey's quirky charm for over a century. If you ever visit New Jersey, don't forget to stop by and see her. Again, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about the Garden State. Have a great night, and I hope to see you in New Jersey soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was really nice. I loved, uh, what's her name, Lucy? Ah, uh, yes, Lucy the Elephant, yes. <laughs> yep, she's one of our 
she's one of our most she used to, um in old old america when cars were the main travel um states would try to have a roadside attraction to attract um summer tourist so lucy the elephant is still a historical roadside you know popularity spot in new jersey that was fascinating so many so many informations about just one state even i thought i knew a few things about new jersey i didn't know about like m m's all the food campbell's too uh that was fascinating um ぜひ、えー、チャットでご質問があれば、質問もコメントよろしくお願いします。えー、I have seen earlier we have had, thank you for your comments everyone about the sound. I'm glad the sound and、uh, the video works well.、Um, I've seen a question earlier from、uh, Midori M、uh, さん、uh, about Uh, accents, regional accents.、Uh, is there a specific accent for New Jersey? We'll also get to Kentucky <laughs> after because the question was about both accents.、Uh, <laughs> is there a, a specific accent in New Jersey? That's a very good question.、Um, if you are from, again, like our sports, <laughs>、um, if you live up in the North New Jersey area,、um, North New Jersey basically belongs to New York. So they,、um, they will definitely tend to have a New York Bronx accent.、Um, so speaking for South New Jersey,、um, We, um, I've never really、uh, developed an accent,、um, which is why every time I tell people、um, I'm from New Jersey, they don't believe me because they're so used to hearing a New York style accent. And again, like our sports team, I have to explain no, no, I'm from the South, not, not, not the North, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm from, I'm, I'm part Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And、um, what about Kentucky?、Uh, CJ, would you do like a presentation, maybe not the whole presentation in, <laughs> with an accent, but、uh, is, there, is there a specific one? There, there is. There's, a, there's an accent that Kentuckians have a reputation for, but I don't believe I share that same accent. But of course, it depends on who you ask. So, like,、uh, maybe even for Sunshine, maybe I have an accent.、Um, you know, I, I think people from Kentucky sound a little different, definitely sound different than New Yorkers and maybe even people from New Jersey. But、um, I don't know. I mean, I've been told by some friends that, you know, I definitely say certain words differently. I can't, I don't, I can't hear it myself, obviously, but yeah, maybe, maybe we definitely have an accent in Kentucky too. Thank you. Thank you very much.、Uh, I see.、Uh, oh, I see some question.、Um, did you watch baseball live a lot? Yes,、uh, you've mentioned also、uh, the, the stadium. Did you used to go see the baseball plays?、Uh, yes.、Um, my last live baseball game was, at the, for, was for the Philadelphia. Phillies.、Um, that was back in 2022.、Um, it, was, it was the Phillies against the Angels when Shohei Otani was playing for that team before he got traded to the Dodgers.、Um, I know、um, uh, the listeners out there may not want to hear it, but Phillies were victorious. So, go in the side, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yay, Phillies! <laughs> That's unfortunate, but yes.、Um, <laughs> let's see what else uh, uh, we have. Lucy is so cute. I should meet her when I visit New Jersey. Can I ride her? Can we ride Lucy? <laughs> um, Lucy is actually,、um, again, so Lucy the Elephant originally was just a main、um, attraction statue, but then th- when she got more popular, Um, she became such a historical landmark that le- after they rebuilt her, she actually became a museum. So you can go inside her and explore the whole history of Lucy the Elephant's story. 
that's fascinating wow <laughs> okay i didn't expect that that much about about lucy i had no idea i've never heard of it um we have oh. is there a world uh her heritage site in new jersey like a, pl a place a must see uh place that you know about or that you would recommend um let's see i um again well uh, like in my slide i do uh recommend trenton um trenton is a very popular spot especially around christmas time because they do reenactments of george washington crossing the delaware river um, um he did that as a way to help win one of the battle parts during the revolutionary war because um nobody expected to actually fight around christmas time but george washington used that to his advantage <laughs> wow uh, great what else do we have any oh yes we have two other comments uh one from yoko san i have been to your state new jersey but i don't know about anything but i visited atlantic city to bet some oh that's good to know <laughs> ah, <the casinos>. yes <laughs> that's good to know uh, yeah. and uh masami san um asked uh oh commented hello sunshine it was very interesting i haven't known that eminence and the first place of baseball game started here uh, there, sorry uh, i'm a big fan of baseball so it's good to know about that part of history thank you that's a very nice comment oh we have another one um i've lived in nj um coastal side of hudson river uh never known lucy the elephant so i'm not the only one <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a shame but i came to know that uh, uh new jersey state is um in plain tea of nature not only green but animals oh yes like do we have like how how is the nature in New Jersey? I've... Um, well, it's uh, speaking for Haddonfield, my hometown, um, we do have a little bit of a riverside and um, we do get an occasional sighting of deer. Um, we did have one bizarre moment where a alligator was discovered. Um, this, um, we only saw it, it was, the sightings of this only happened one time. Um, and in fact, it kind of even became a little bit of a New Jersey devil legend too, because there was so many theories about how this alligator was discovered. Was it somebody's pet? Was it running away? Because because it didn't want to become a woman's purse. Um, <laughs> but other than that, um, our one of our popular natures is uh, the si a few sightings of deer, but most famously, the uh, goldfinch. Oh yes, the, the goldfinch. Uh, great, then I think that uh, it's all good for uh, now. Uh, well, now we'll, we'll take a flight, I guess. Is it is it far enough to go to Kentucky? I'm I'm bad at geography. I'm sorry. I should have checked before. I should have checked before. So uh, let's go this time to uh, Kentucky, uh, CJ. Uh, feel free. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And yeah, the the learning about New Jersey was actually new for me too. I mean, I live not so far. I think maybe to get to New Jersey from Kentucky is about maybe 13 or 14 hours by car or so. So it's a little it's a little ways away, but I mean, I learned a lot of things, maybe just as you all did about New Jersey. So really nice. And now I'll tell you a little bit uh, about Kentucky. Now I have some information there. It might be a little tough to see, but just so you know, the whole state of Kentucky, and you can see where it's located there, uh, the whole state, is about four and a half million people. Um, you know, some cities in the United States are that big, even in Japan, they're that big. But the whole state, it's very wide, it's very open, uh, lots of space, lots of green. So I know they're, you know, we were asking about the nature in New Jersey. And what comes to my mind when I think of New Jersey is maybe similar to New York, uh, lots of buildings and 
you know, just concrete, lots of concrete. Uh, Kentucky, usually when people think about it, when it comes to their mind, or at least in the U.S., maybe internationally too, the first thing they think about is maybe country. At least I hear that a lot. So, you know, that's why I'm happy to talk about it today, because while there is a lot of, of country land and green, uh, Kentucky has some cities that are quite uh, modern. And I'm actually from the biggest city in Kentucky, Louisville. So I'll be talking about that a bit. But just some other things that I'll share with you. Kentucky was the 15th or 16th, sorry, 16th state. And like I said, the city that I'm from, Louisville, Kentucky, is the biggest city there. And I think if, last time I checked, I think Louisville has about 640,000 people. So we're not talking about a really big place here. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's modern, it's nice, restaurants, shopping malls, things like that, anything that you could possibly want, and lots of them. But it's not New York. It's not as big as New York. It's not, in population-wise, it's not as big as New Jersey or many other cities as well. But it's still very nice. So hopefully you can learn a few things about not only the state, but also the city of Louisville. So as I mentioned before, if you take a look at this picture here, this is usually what comes to people's minds when they think about Kentucky. Even when I'm driving, or when I was there, when I lived there, when I would drive from one city to another, a lot of the times when you're on the expressway, this is what you will see. Farms, grass. In fact, Kentucky is known as the bluegrass state. I do not know why it's blue why they call it. I've heard before that maybe some people think it looks blue in certain places, certain circumstances. But anyway, that's what it's known for. And it's true. I mean, we do have a lot of scenery just like this. So driving on the expressway can be quite pleasant, actually, as you uh, drive through for hours. And this is just another picture of what it looks like. However, today I want you to see my city. It's actually a real city, not a lot of buildings. This is it. This is the skyline that you would see if you go to Louisville, Kentucky. But it's nice. It's nice, and there's a lot of things that people know about not only the city, but the state as well. But I like for people to see this because, as I mentioned earlier, especially within the U.S., sometimes people from Kentucky have a reputation for you know, like not wearing shoes, like they're way out in the country. So they just walk on the grass without shoes on. And, and uh, you know, there's no movie theaters, no shopping malls. It's all country, country, country. But that's obviously not true. So I'm here to, to let you know that's not true. There is a very nice city, uh, very nice cities that are there. And this is one of them. So I want you to see it. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. Now, this is another thing. I, I imagine most of you know this place. It doesn't matter what country I go to. The moment I tell them I'm from Kentucky, the very next thing that comes out of the majority of the mouths of people is KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I'm not sure whether to be happy about that or... I don't know what to think about it, but anyway, it happens. So it's okay. You know, it is something that we're known for. And it's true. You know, they they know Kentucky, if for no, for no other reason, they know it because of the restaurant. So, I mean, I've had a chance to visit a few different places in my life. Uh, of course, Japan, here in Japan, there's KFC. In Korea, there's KFC. In the Philippines, there's KFC, you know, everywhere. So it's nice to know on one hand that something from your state actually made it internationally in such a such a big way. It's really interesting to see. At times you get a little tired of that being the only thing that people know Kentucky for. So hopefully you'll know something else about Kentucky by the end of our presentation here. All right. So for the next one, here's one you might know. Any of you who like to drink alcohol. Kentucky bourbon. Um, interestingly, I'm not much of 
a big fan of any alcohol, really, bourbon, uh, whiskey, um, even sake here in Japan. But this is another one of those things that you can see in any country. And it's, uh, it's really, it's really, you know, there's something you think about when you see it in some liquor store in, in another country. It's, it's really cool. But it's something that we're known for, Kentucky bourbon. And I find that a lot of times people that have never been to Kentucky know about, you know, they know about KFC and they know about Kentucky bourbon. So that, I guess that's, that's a good thing. For the next slide, I want to talk about sports. Now, this is something that Sunshine talked about quite a bit, uh, bit as well. And I will do the same. Because in all reality, in the United States, maybe people are able to keep their sanity because of sports. Any sport. Doesn't matter the state. It almost doesn't matter the city either. Sports are big. Now, here's the difference, though. You know, Sunshine mentioned a really good point about the area of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, lots and lots of professional teams. That's something that Kentucky does not have. Or if they do, it's not many. It's maybe minor league baseball they have, but not professional teams. That's something that a lot of other states have. Kentucky doesn't doesn't need it because college sports, which is also true of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, college sports are, they make just as much money, just as much revenue as the professional sports. And as you can see here, these two teams are the University of Kentucky and on the right is the University of Louisville. Extreme rivals. You all know about that. Those of you who watch sports, maybe it's no different here in Japan. The Hanshin Tigers and any other team. You know, I'm here in Kyoto, so I know about the Hanshin Tigers, but I'm sure that they have rivals. It is so strong, not only in the United States, but especially in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, these two teams here in college sports, collegiate sports, are not just any two teams. They actually are very well known all over the country. We're talking about, you know, any coach for this is this is probably a basketball. This is probably taken from basketball, but it doesn't matter the sport either. The rivalry is so big. It can be basketball. It can be baseball. It can be American football, tennis, not tennis, hockey, uh, hockey. Um, what else? Yeah, maybe tennis. Yeah, maybe tennis too. Volleyball, golf, and so many other sports that I don't personally watch, but the rivalry is strong. And it's something that, you know, fans of the state, you you can't you you can't root for both. It doesn't work. You either are a U of L fan or you're a UK fan, or you don't watch sports, and that's it. And I mean, people grow up that way. You know, I grew up that way. My mother, my family were U of L fans. So inevitably, I also became a U of L fan. And when I got old enough to make my own decision about which team I would support, it was still U of L. So even today, even from Japan, I still keep up with this team. You know, they win, they lose. It's okay. But I like to, to keep up with it. Uh, again, if you take a look at this next slide here, this is just a, a small picture. You know, this is a U of L stadium. And by the way, let me just go back just real quick to the first picture here. Sorry. This picture here. You can't really, I don't know how well you can see it or if you have an extended screen, but this is probably the stadium you're looking at in that picture. Brand new. It's probably about 15 years old now. So it's been there for a little while, but still relatively new in terms of sports arena arenas. And uh, yeah, like I said, the rivalry is big. So it's always fun. You know, people don't take it too seriously, but they are serious. And again, you can't root for both. You have to pick one. So it's always fun to, you know, I have friends that are UK fans. 
I'm a U of L fan. It's okay. We have fun with it. So it's always nice. Now, uh, Sunshine mentioned about baseball. Interestingly, um, as she mentioned, those of you who may be interested in baseball, um, this that you see here is the Louisville Slugger Museum. Um, it's funny because I've been here several times and anytime I have, you know, if I have a friend of mine come from Japan, a couple of times I've had that situation, friends came to visit and I took them here. Even if they didn't like baseball, they went anyway, because it is so popular. Now I can't speak for um, any of, I know that, I know that um, the last time I went there, oh, what's his name? I forgot the base, the Japanese baseball player's name, but from a long time ago, um, maybe it'll come to me later. And maybe some of you know who I'm talking about, but uh, we're talking about 20 years ago before, you know, the U.S. got all of these really, really good players from Japan. But anyway, his bat was made in this factory and shipped to Japan. And maybe it's true of a lot of different countries, different professional players and it's it's interesting it's something to kind of take pride in i might say because you know it's uh, apparently people really 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 care about this museum and people you know from all over come to see it and it's tucked away it's downtown in downtown louisville but it's like on the very very end of a major street i think it's on main street but at the very very end but there it is People go visit it all the time. Just another little quick point about this picture. Um, this bat is actually not touching this building at all. There's about, it's not much, but there's a little gap of space in between. It's actually only supported by maybe the foundation and possibly some kind of, I'm sure there's some kind of, you know, support beam inside maybe. But anyway, the bat is huge but not touching anything. So it's it's kind of interesting, but really, really interesting place there, the Louisville Slugger Museum. Now I saved this one for last uh, because this is probably, maybe, maybe most people know about the Kentucky Derby, I think. Um, and the reason I say that, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, with the Kentucky Derby, uh, we're talking about, I don't know, millions and millions and millions of dollars won and lost for a two minute race. It's, it's so fast. You know, you can't, if you blink, you'll miss it. And yet at this time of year, usually in May, I think it's in May, at this time of year, everybody makes money. It doesn't matter what you do, anything, they're going to make money. And the reason why is because people from all over the world come to Kentucky to see this race. In fact, even horses from Japan have been flown over to run in a two minute race. But that's how important it is in, in such a huge history. So I'll tell you something interesting about the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the place I meant to, I don't think I, yeah, I didn't get a picture of it. I should have, but the place where this, uh, this place is, is run, uh, the Kentucky Derby is in, um, oh, the name escapes me right now. Churchill Downs is the name of this building that you're looking at right here. Churchill Downs, and it's in the middle. It's in the middle of a regular neighborhood. It's not downtown. It's not, you know, it's in the middle of a neighborhood. It's huge. It's a huge place, but this track surrounded by houses. So here's why I say everybody makes money. So they have stars from all over. We're talking athletes, you know, we're talking movie actors, musicians, all sorts of people, CEOs. I have friends that a friend of mine used to drive a limousine, temporary, just this temporary job he would do, about a week, because stars would come in 
and they, you know, the limousine companies need people to drive these people around. So they come there and they spend money like it's <laughs> like it's water or something. But limousine people make money. These people give tips. These actors and musicians, they give tips. They can make thousands of dollars in a couple of days just from just from tips. And because this place, Churchill Downs, is in the middle of a neighborhood, then sometimes what people do, although it may be, I'm not sure how legal it is, but anyway, what they'll do is they will use their front yard. And, you know, we're talking about the U.S., so if you've ever been to the U.S. or you watch movies on television, the front yard is big. There's plenty of space. So people actually rent their front yard for parking space and they can charge whatever they like a hundred dollars they'll pay it two hundred dollars they will pay it they have to have somewhere to park their car or have their limousine or their chauffeur or whoever it is parked and they they don't really care people come to the kentucky derby to spend money and so you can imagine everybody benefits from that uh restaurants you know, the, the, the shopping malls, different places, all benefit from having this uh, Kentucky Derby. This next picture is mm, what people look like at the Derby. Maybe not everybody, but they love to dress up. And the big thing is hats. So companies that make these hats, like you see with these people here have on, they make a lot of money because everybody wants to wear one. It's like a tradition. Maybe they don't even know why they wear it, but they wear it. And people really have a good time with that. So this last picture is the Japanese horse, um, Forever Young, right? They always have these names that are just, you know, kind of, they're, they're funny. Mystic Dan was one name. But as you can see, I think this was this was just this year. The the Japanese horse forever young finished third. So actually, you know, won the race. So again, it's not just in Japan, but all over the world, horses sometimes are flown in. It's really a big deal. And it's something that I wanted to bring up last because it, it really is something that's been going on for maybe hundreds of years. I don't know exactly when I didn't look, but it's a long, long time. And also my grandfather worked in Churchill Downs for about, 50 years, almost one of his first jobs, and he retired there um, until he got sick. So really, really interesting history I have with this, with this, uh, you know, the Kentucky Derby. Of course, it's been in the family, but really maybe in all families, not just in Kentucky, but even all over the world. So it's really interesting. And that's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you about Kentucky for today. So I thank you again for listening, and we'll turn it back over to our host. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I took few notes even of the things that I wanted to ask about. Um, so yes, first you have mentioned um, uh, about 13 hours by car it's from- Yeah, something like that. So I, that's really why no one in the United States like travels that far in car, I guess. It's not a It's thing. the truth. Yeah, it's the truth. Because um so I don't know, maybe Sunshine, I, I I like me personally, I've spent most of my travel time on the East Coast. Because yeah, I mean, like you said, even to New Jersey it's 14 hours, to California it's 36 in a car. So <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, and that's from Kentucky, not from the Far East end. So, yeah, 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 it's far. That's fascinating. fascinating. From Europe, it sounds so different. So, uh, yes, I'll check also, like, some comments that we've had. Um, if I heard uh, Kentucky, there reminds me, uh, Kentucky Derby, it is famous. Um, in another one says it's interesting you can bet in Atlantic City and on the Kentucky Derby. So yes, I guess you can spend money yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You can spend money everywhere in the United States. I believe it. 
Um, yeah, the Kentucky Derby is also uh, it's it's base it's very global. So of course, people yeah. who are in Atlantic City they place their bets there, and they come. They even forget to even just gamble at the casinos because they'll go to a casino bar find whatever TV they can find um, and hope that the horse that they bet it, you know, they bet it on one. So, um, so, so Atlantic city also benefits from the Kentucky Derby. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And so you mentioned it is like once a year. That's right. Yeah. Just once Mm -hmm. a year. And I mean, there's one thing I've failed to mention. uh, I wanted to mention is that usually in, you know, around this time of year, uh, it, you know, Kentucky, uh, Louisville specifically may, you know, at times in certain parts of the city have, uh, you know, people that are homeless, unfortunately, but the city will, I would say they take maybe positive measures to, you know, they, they try to, they try to not only clean up the airport and, and make everything look good, but they, they try to make sure that there's nothing that people might find offensive or, you know, they try to make the city and the state look as good as it can because they have people coming from all over. And so they try to do whatever they can. They clean up areas. They make sure uh, people that are homeless have somewhere to be. Uh, and not just for that week, but, you know, inevitably, maybe, maybe, you know, people end up leaving uh, wherever they're stationed at, at a certain point. But anyway, they try to make sure they clean up everything so that they can get ready for the vast number of people that come into the city. So, yeah, that's that sounds like a lot of things happening in such a short amount of time. Uh <laughs> Yeah. To to get back also a bit still on the sports um, about uh, the baseball this time, uh, we have a comment from Masami uh, who sent us a link to that I checked before. Um, maybe the former baseball player in Japan uh, who might have made his baseball bad there could be uh, O Sadaharu. Does that name? Uh, it wasn't. Now I would know that. I'll definitely know the name when I hear it. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't that one. Uh, I, thanks for the. Yeah, I appreciate the. Yeah, because I never did remember the person's name, but he was real famous, <laughs> and he 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 was really really famous because at the time, at the time there were no Japanese. You know there weren't as many Japanese players. And I think mm-hmm. even when he played in the MLB, he was already in his late thirties, I think. Mm-hmm. I'll and think I've of his name that. eventually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've seen also mm-hmm. earlier sunshine. Um, you have send us Eagles and giants fans are the same. You have to pick a side. Oh yeah. No, like um, in, in, in New Jersey, you, it's like, um because uh the new york giants in football and the philadelphia eagles they are uh team rivals because uh Mm -hmm. they are in the same division of the uh national football league so and of course again in the state of new jersey you 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 can't have like half a giants and half an eagles no you gotta you, you gotta pick one and then whoever you pick, you stay on that side. <laughs> you're, yeah. no longer, you're, you're no longer family. <laughs> yes, that's interesting. You also <laughs> mentioned it, uh, CJ, that like at a certain age you were able to choose for yourself, which, <laughs> which as a statement I thought was so funny uh, yeah. to word it this way. Um, another like small point that I find fascinating is uh, how popular college sports are. Uh, in yeah. the United States, uh, because I haven't heard much about this in Japan, but because I've seen it through like movies and stuff, I know in the U.S. there's like a whole culture where you can uh, go to college because of sports. Well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, so, yeah well, yeah, it, it's it it's 
so on the one hand, um, like I said, you know, people live for the weekend. Uh, they live for like in professional football, Sunday is the day. Everybody knows it. Even people that don't like football know that it's it's you know Sunday is for football. That's the day that everybody gets together and watches. Uh, but college sports are very similar. People live to watch these sports. Now the the problem though that comes with that, as you mentioned, is uh, when a college when the sport becomes more popular than the university. I mean, maybe the university doesn't care so much, but what can happen is corruption can kind of find its way into oh, the program. So, you know, players that, you know, if a school is so big, like UK, in fact, used to, they're still kind of known for this, but UK basketball, if you play for this school, it gets so much recognition so much you know always on the big channels at 9 p.m 7 p.m and so nba scouts are watching they're always watching and they know that talent comes from this school so sometimes coaches and assistant coaches will you know maybe offer some some money or or some uh, uh cars or something mm -hmm. to the player so that the player will join the school. And of course the, the player eventually makes it to the M MBA. So mm -hmm. it can, it doesn't always happen, but it, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. So, it, you know, there's a dark side to it. <laughs> I see. No, I, I agree. Cause like in like, um, uh, there's, um, cause again, speaking for my state, um, South New Jersey is growing for players, especially in uh, basketball. Um, just like we even had a, um, a sophomore, he didn't even graduate our high school yet, but scouts were already trying to get him into, actually there was even talks about trying to even get him into the NBA um, mm. because such a, such, you know, strong talent um, that this young man had um so again um there's always um i believe there's a movie even called like uh, getting moving back to football there's even a movie called like friday night lights a highly recommended movie which does show a little bit of the dark side about giving players the advantage not only on the football field but also in their education because yeah. um if your grade average is not good you're actually not supposed to play the sport right. but of course um coaches and teachers always try to find a way like just you know you turn that you know c to a b you know you just mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. that's right yeah that's right wow that's definitely something i've never like i've never thought about uh that's interesting and because you're both like quite into sports um do you happen to follow still a bit uh the news and the sports from japan or is the time difference uh getting in between uh no i'm a i'm a big fan of uh, especially the philadelphia eagles um uh, most games in their season are actually at 2 a.m so um i actually do wake up at two o'clock in the morning and watch the games <gasps> live wow <laughs> what about yeah. you uh yeah i i'm same same i mean with youtube nowadays it's you know it's 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 no problem at all to keep up with with things and and just the internet in general um i don't get to watch live games as much uh, but actually even in the states uh you know even when i was in kentucky i i didn't you know i slowed down on watching the live games and i would just catch maybe uh some highlights or something on youtube or the or or some sports channel or something but yeah definitely anyway to answer your question definitely still keep up with all of it nba ncaa college sports college football 
Yeah, definitely. That helps. Yes, the the highlights videos. I guess yeah. make make it easier. Um, checking a few questions and comments that we have. Uh, Hiro asked, uh, "Rural Kentucky has a lovely nature. Is Louisville the biggest city in Kentucky? Is the capital city Frankfort? Which is better to visit?" Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Louisville is the biggest city, and then there the rivalry. Kentucky is the second largest. Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky is. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, and then Frankfurt. Uh, yes, Frankfurt is the capital, but it's there's nothing to see in Frankfurt except uh, maybe a few government buildings and a you know Walmart or two. But I wouldn't go there if, if you're going to go to Kentucky. Um, you know, just depending on what you like, you can find lots of things that are related to nature. Uh, one thing, there's a couple of things I couldn't mention. Mammoth Cave was one of them. I really wish I could have talked about it more, but it's the biggest, the largest cave system in the world. So there's 500, uh, how many kilometers? 700 and almost 800 kilometers of cave under Kentucky. And it's been there for years and years since I was a kid. I, I remember field trips, but um, they only toured 20, like 35 kilometers. I can't remember exactly. It's like 20 miles. It's not a lot in comparison to how much is there, but they just haven't mapped it all out yet. So if you like that kind of thing and you like modern, you know, and even, you know, if you drive a little ways or go a little ways, you can find nature as well in, in Louisville or close to Louisville. So I would, that's what I would recommend. Nice. Uh, great. We also have uh, Kiho who asked, um, I recently learned that Burgoo stew is famous in Kentucky. Did you eat it often? I'm sorry, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Burgoo, B-U-R-J-O-O. -O. Uh, I'm not familiar. Um, I'm not familiar with it. I've also, I've also checked it here. Can you? Oh, <laughs> I may be pronouncing it very badly. Do you know about it? Ah, uh, B U R G O. I, yeah, I still, <laughs> I'm not quite familiar. Let me, let me look it up real quick. But no, I've not had it myself. Oh, I see. Stew. Okay. Oh, yeah. Kentucky Burgoo recipe. Huh. Who knew? Yeah, I've never heard of it before, but um, yeah, it's like, I wonder if it's good. The more we learn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, we also have a question. When does the derby take place? I missed the article in detail. Uh, I enjoyed looking at the picture of the horses. Um, yes, so uh, I yeah. think we have said around May. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this year it was May 2nd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always, always early May. So And yeah, it, May, ah, oh, that's 2025. But anyway, yeah, it's always early May. Yeah. And it's, the entire event is only for a two minute mm -hmm. long, like. Uh, no, 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 they okay. have, there's race, yeah. <laughs> there's races all day. And then the Derby is at some strange time, like 507 or, Uh, 203 or something like that. And um, I can't imagine, I can only imagine how many people are like watching this event all at the same time, just just in this two minutes, two minute time span. But yeah, yeah, oh, wow. early May on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's interesting. That was the first time, honestly, that I've heard about it. I guess the most hmm. um, famous uh, like uh, sports event out would hear about would be like Super Bowl. Outside of it, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, is, is, it just, is it the same? Does the Derby, I guess the, the idea it, the it image is. looks a bit mm. different, but do they also have like someone famous performing? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but but really the reason is all the famous people are there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The, no, I'm joking, but the, yeah. But yeah, seriously, no, no, no halftime show or anything like that. But parties do take place, and mm -hmm. um, there, there's, yeah, there's lots of parties that happen, and 
you know, some famous person might show up in some restaurant or something like that. So anyway, there, people definitely get some kind of entertainment, I suppose. Wow, mm. that's that's fascinating. And I guess mm. the one last question that I would ask that's that's from that's from me and I have to ask it. Um, so. Do you think KFC in Japan is good? <laughs> is it better? I can, honestly, it, <laughs> I can better probably, I can count on one hand, probably three fingers, how many times I've been to Kentucky, I've been to KFC in Japan in 17 years. <laughs> Only a few, but yes, it actually tastes the same. It actually, that, At least the last time I had it, it tastes pretty much the same. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, definitely also on my to-do list for this weekend, I guess. Uh, so um, I think we've checked uh, all the questions and comments on the chat. Um, do you have like maybe uh, just a minute each to also quickly talk about your lessons on Cafe Talk? Sunshine, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm mainly available on weekdays. I offer um, one hour lessons. Um, I can also customize a shorter amount of lesson times depending on the material and length of the lessons. If you have a special lesson request, you can book me at count counseling with Sunshine. That is where I can do a less lesson customization for you based on your needs and style. I also have a fun chat with my cats. Uh, lesson page. So if you're an animal lover, just like me, uh, let's talk about our pets and our favorite animals together. Um, and hopefully around uh, next month, I do hope to launch a new lesson um, called, you know, Sunshine's Book Club. So if you are a book lover like me, I would love to share our favorite books together and we can uh, build a general discussion about our favorite books. So coming soon. Thank you very much. Uh, CJ, can you? Yeah, uh... yeah, maybe similar. I, I mean, I'm also available. I try to work uh, at least a little bit every day, uh, mostly during the weekdays, a little bit on the weekends. Um, I deal mostly, you know, I do a lot of conversation practice, a lot of grammar practice, um, you know, helping people with anything they may need help with, whether it's pronunciation or prepositions, phrasal verbs, idioms, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, I also offer one hour lessons, really any time that's available on Cafe Talk, uh, feel free. And um, other than that, uh, because I mean, you know, living in Japan, um, I've lived here for, or I've been in the country long enough that when I talk to other people from Japan, it's always interesting because, you know, there's always a lot of different cultural things to talk about and differences. And, you know, so it, it's always an, an interesting time. But yes, feel free to check out the profile. If you find a time that works for you, feel free. We'll have a conversation. And much like Sunshine mentioned, if there's something specific that you want to work on, feel free to let me know and we can we can work on that as well. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you a lot to our viewers. I also see a last comment. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the program. Thank you a lot, everyone, for uh, watching. Uh, don't forget that the... Um, Um, both of the presentations are available uh, in the supplementary text, uh, so you can check those. Um, and you will also be able to take a look afterwards at um, the symposium recording. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us tonight. And uh, we hope to see you soon again on Sunshine or CJ's lessons. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Bye. See you. See you.